Right, here I am. That's Spiny Ruins. Yes. I'm probably going to go upwards there because there seems to be people working on something over there. So, but I'm going to have to do what I always have to do, which is turn the video off for a while. I'll just go up that way. Yeah. Okay. Now, on this video, we have to go right the way back to Adam and Eve. So, Adam and Eve partake of the fruit. Right. As I mentioned before, once they partook of the fruit, suddenly decay started to enter. Because partaking of the fruit led to death. Well, led to the, the determination that death is the consequence of that. So, therefore, decay started to enter, but entered very, very slowly initially. So, you know, Adam and Eve lived to very, very old ages of close to a thousand. But they weren't supposed to die at all, though. They were supposed to live for eternity in their bodies. They weren't supposed to die, but they died because they partook of the fruit. It wasn't a case where they were never supposed to gain knowledge of good and evil because God would have told them. God would have helped them to understand that, but they were supposed to walk it out. At that point in time, there was a firmament above the earth. Firmament means a layer of water above the earth. Quite a substantial layer of water, but that would have made the earth, you know, um, Hawaii times 1,000. That's one way to put it. Hawaii times 1,000, because it would have been a major greenhouse effect having the sun beating down upon this water and coming through the water and the water acting as a lovely pane of glass. So what happens with a greenhouse? It's always warmer in the greenhouse than it is out of the greenhouse, isn't it? Yeah, that's where you put your tomatoes and stuff out. Certainly if you live in the UK, because you're not going to grow those outdoors. <laughs> it ain't warm enough. But stick them in a the greenhouse, they grow. Because it gives you that that beautiful humidity and that temperature that you need to grow such fruits and vegetables. You can do that in a greenhouse. You can't do that outside. It wasn't until after the flood that they were told that they could eat meat or they could eat the animals that were there. So, of course, the flood, how did that happen? The firmament was taken down. So when the firmament was taken down, it's then that we suddenly see after the flood that we have winter. We have spring, we have summer, we have autumn. We now have four seasons. There was only one season beforehand. One season now turns into four. There's a lot happening because of what they did. <laughs> yes. Indeed, an awful lot happening because of what they did. Well, put it this way, we're coming into a time now. And it's an incredibly exciting time. It's a time that we should be incredibly honoured. But it's a time that means that uh, the final acts are upon us. Not upon us in the next couple of days, not upon us necessarily as in the next couple of years, but, um, you know, a decade or so. You know, a decade or so is about right. Certainly, as I've said before, Romans 8, 18 to 23. Now, when we start walking according to Romans 8, 18 to 23, you then have the point where creation will be restored to the point before... Adam and Eve partook of the fruit. Right, read it. Read Romans 8, 18 to 23. Creation then becomes part of the glory of God. As it was intended to be. It also means that we, who are his, are now walking 
as man was intended by God to walk. That man and woman are now walking as Yeshua walked. And so the world now receives the healing it's been waiting thousands of years for. Folks, I believe that we are coming into that time now. And I think it's an incredible honour. If we're brought into that, that is such an honour of a thing to be brought into. It's just... Yeah, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because what was it? You know, shortly after, well, at some point after, um, the partaking of the fruit, we had the first death. We had the first murder. We had the first temptation, well, major temptation after that, really. Because obviously the first temptation would have been the tree. But then you had that, you know, the normal devil whispering to Cain about his brother. To attack his brother because Cain was offended. That whatever his brother produced as an offering to God was accepted that Cain's offering was not accepted. Well, does that mean that Abel's offering was better than Cain's? Nope. Not in any way, shape or form. No. Imagine you have two children. Imagine you're a decent father, a good father, a good mother, mother. Either way. Imagine those children are um, producing drawings for you to put on the fridge. Now, most parents put the drawings on the fridge. Why? Because they love their children. Not because the drawings are such high quality, because, generally <laughs> speaking, they're absolutely awful. As drawings go, they're absolutely terrible. You can barely make out what's supposed to be what. You have to ask the kids, OK, what's this supposed to be? You have to ask them what they intended it to be, because the drawings aren't great quality. But it's because you love them that you do that. Whatever they offer, that's fantastic, isn't it? It's absolutely marvellous because they did it. That's how God was. The thing of it is, is that Abel recognised that God loved him and whatever he produced, God would love it. God would love it. So he didn't try too hard. Cain, unfortunately, didn't know this. He didn't accept that God loved him. So he tried. He tried to to do the best offering he could possibly do. He spent ages on it. I imagine he spent about 10 times the amount of time that Abel spent. And he used 10 times the amount of stuff and his offering was 10 times the size. But God didn't accept his offering because God knew his heart. God knew that in his heart he was trying too hard. He knew it wasn't love. Yeah, God loved Abel. Abel loved God. And that was a big difference, wasn't it, really? So, yeah. These are all things that happened after. Now, of course, Are we going to restore things like the firmament? No. I don't imagine so. I don't imagine that's going to happen. But everything you see in here, everything you can see around here, those trees, the grasses, the bushes, all this stuff, the birds in the sky, the clouds, they're going to be far more beautiful than they are right now. Because all of this is part of creation. It's all part of creation. 
and creation has been you know, waiting, 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 eagerly waiting for the revealing of the children of God. So it too can be revealing the glory of God. And it will. As I say, we're in this, we're in this time now. And it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be something which we need to be completely honoured about. One second. Typical. I'll finish this anyway because they got to open the gate. So, anyway, I'm going to leave you to it. I think that's uh, a little bit for you too. You take care. God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.